Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with our today's practice questions, we have an announcement. Baiju's Exam Prep IS will be launching Target Prelims 2022 Crash Course. This will be scheduled from 5th of April to 24th of May 2022. And what is that you have to do? You have to download our application. This will be available on the Play Store called as Baiju's Exam Prep application. So this course will be conducted only on the application where we would have the discussion with respect to the static part. Current affairs will also be discussed. In addition to the YouTube crash course, what we will have is the static questions which will be discussed only on the Baiju's Exam Prep application. So what are you waiting for? Download this application and watch the beautiful lectures and the explanation which is scheduled to be conducted from 5th of April. What are the unique features of the program? We will have 50 day revision program. Students will be provided with a daily revision plan, time bound revision of the current affairs and daily mock test will be taken up as part of the static crash course. In addition to the crash course, to help you further sail through the UPSC civil services journey, Baiju's will also provide the weekly current affairs with respect to the places in news. This will be a weekly video which will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. So what is that you have to do? As you know, like these initiatives, comment on these videos and share these videos with your fellow aspirants. Let's get started and look into the first question. With respect to kangaroos, which of the following statements is our correct? They are the world's largest marsupials. Kangaroos cannot walk backward. Kangaroos are indigenous to Australia and New Guinea. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the kangaroos. When we speak about kangaroos, where are they present? Yes, they are present in Australia, which we know by default. And they are also present in New Guinea in small pockets. These marsupials who are native to Australia are not found in wild in India. But in this particular case, kangaroo was found in India. So an investigation is being conducted by the wildlife authorities. When it comes to the second statement it says kangaroos cannot walk backward this is the right statement that is because of their hind legs bulky tail they would not be able to walk backwards and they are the world's largest marsupials yes this statement is also right since the first second and the third statement are right the answer to this would be one two and three now let's look into the next practice question Consider the following statements with respect to Sher Shah Suri. Sher Shah remained a pious Muslim and was generally tolerant towards other religions. The famous Hindi work Padmavat by Malik Muhammad Jayasi was written during his reign. In his administration, Diwan I. Aris was in charge of revenue and finance. Which of the statements given above is our correct? The answer to this is 1 and 2 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Sher Shah Suri. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first option, yes, Sher Shah remained a pious Muslim, but he was generally tolerant towards other religions. When you look into the second option, the famous Hindi work Padmavat by Malik Muhammad Jayasi was written during this reign. This is also the right statement. But when you look into the third statement, in his administration, Divan I. Aris was in charge of army and not revenue and finance. Now let's look at important facts with respect to the preliminary examination. Shesha Sur's conquests include Bundelkhand, Malwa, Multan, Punjab and Sindh. His empire occupied the whole of North India except Assam, Gujarat, Kashmir and Nepal. He has an administration which had number of authorities. This included Divan E. Visarat which means he was in charge of revenue and finance. Divani Aris in charge of army. Divani Rasalat is the foreign minister. Divani Insha which means the ministry of communication. Under his administration, Iktas were nothing but various administrative units. Land survey was sensibly done. They also had the land revenue administration as well and police were competently restructured and crime was less during his regime. 
Shah also borrowed many ideas like branding of horses from Alauddin Khilji. These are some of the important pointers from the preliminary examination point of view. The article here makes a reference to one of the embroidery techniques called as the Kheta. So Kheta happens to be an embroidery technique and it is exclusively practiced by the women of the Sher Shabadi community. Now let's look into the next practice question. Arrange the following in the chronological order. Satyagraha Ashram was founded. Gandhi ji led the Dandi march. Gandhi ji was arrested for the first time by the British government for sedition. Gandhi ji became the president of Indian National Congress. The answer to this is 1, 3, 4 and 2. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a reference to the Sabarmati Ashram. So now if you look into the chronological order, what comes first is the Satyagraha Ashram was established back in the year 1915. So remember when we speak about Satyagraha Ashram, it was established back in the year 1915. Then we had Gandhiji who led the Dandi March back in the year 1930. Then we had Gandhiji who was arrested for the first time by the British government for sedation in the year 1922 and Gandhiji became the president of Indian National Congress in the year 1924. So if we arrange them by the chronological order, what comes first is the Satyagraha Ashram which was founded in 1915 followed by Gandhiji getting arrested in the year 1922. Then it was followed by the president of Indian National Congress in 1924 and finally we have the Gandhiji leading the Dandi March in the year 1930. So the answer to this would be 1, 3, 4 and 2. There are other important events in Gandhiji's life which includes that he was awarded the Kesar Hin back in the year 1915. He was elected as the Vice President of Gujarat Sabha in the year 1915. He lectured at Banaras Hindi University in 1916, met Jawaharlal Nehru for the first time at the Lucknow Congress in 1916. The first issue of Navjeevan was published in 1919. First issue of Young India was published in 1919. Gujarat Vidya Pit was established in the year 1920 and he was charged of sedition for authorship of three articles in Young India which was in 1922. And remember the only time Gandhiji became the president of Indian National Congress was in 1924 where he presided over the Belgam Congress. In addition to this we also have the Dandi March which he took care of in 1930 and he broke the salt law in 1930. He was released from prison in 1931. Gandhi Irwin Pact was signed in 1931 and finally he became the representative of the Congress at the London Roundtable Conference. These are some of the important events in Gandhiji's life and this can probably be asked in your preliminary examination. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following statements with respect to Juvenile Justice Act is are correct? A child alleged to be in conflict with law can be placed in a police lockup or lodged in a jail if he has committed a heinous offence. A child alleged to have committed a bailable or non-bailable offence can be released on bail with or without surety or placed under the supervision of a probation officer or under the care of any fit person. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is two only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Juvenile Justice Act. Let us try and understand what is this Juvenile Justice Act all about. When we speak about the Juvenile Justice Act, there are two parts to this act. One is about protecting the children. The other is about those children who have committed an offence, who have violated the laws in the country. That is why it is called as juveniles who are in conflict with law. On one side, you have laws where you have to take care of the children. These are the children who are abandoned by their parents. These are the ones who do not have the parents and the guardians or they might be beggars on the road as well. So this part of the law also speaks about taking care of them. On the other side, you also have a law which is in conflict with law. So any individual who is less than 18 years of age will be called as a juvenile. 
if this particular person commits an offense, illegal offense, such as what is called as juvenile in conflict with law. According to the 2015 Act, whenever a child commits an offense, this can be categorized as three offenses. One is called as the petty offense, which attracts a maximum of three years imprisonment, a serious offense, which attracts imprisonment from three to seven years, and a heinous offense is one where it attracts a maximum punishment of seven years and more. So what do we have in the Juvenile Justice Act? In this act, there is a new categorization called as the heinous offense. If there is an individual who is in this age group of 16 to 18 years has committed one of these acts and it is heinous in nature, you will have the Juvenile Justice Board which will look into whether that individual committed this crime as an adult, whether he knew the consequences of the crime, whether he had planned for it, everything will be taken into picture and ultimately judgment would be delivered. Now if you look into the options, a child alleged to be in conflict with law can be placed in a police lockup or lodged in a jail even if he is committed heinous offence, this is a wrong statement. Which means that even if he is committed a heinous offence, he should not be placed in a police lockup. That is because you do not know what was the consequences, why did that person commit that heinous crime, this is yet to be investigated. So the minute you feel that this person has committed an offence, you just cannot put this person behind the bars in that police lockup. Why? Because there might be those people who are adults and these people might have committed heinous offences themselves. So if you put this child in that lockup, they may get influenced by that particular person. So if a child, even if it has committed a heinous offence, should not be placed in jail or the police lockup. So the first statement is wrong. When you look into the second statement, a child alleged to have committed a bailable or a non-bailable offence. Where do you see this? We have one of the laws, procedural laws called as the CRPC. For every act that is present in the IPC, you would also have a schedule which is placed in the CRPC which clearly gives you an idea whether it is a bailable offence or a non-bailable offence. Whether the child has committed a bailable offence or a non-bailable offence, he can be released on bail with or without surety or should be placed under the supervision of a probation officer. This statement is right. So looking into it, the answer to this would be two only. Now let's look into the next practice question. Indian government bond yields are influenced by which of the following? Actions of the United States Federal Reserve, actions of the Reserve Bank of India, inflation and short term interest rate. Select the correct answer using the code given below. The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. All the statements given in this practice question are right and this happens to be a previous year question from the year 2021. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is the Indian Antarctic Bill. Why did the Indian government introduce this bill? When we look into the global countries, there are about 27 countries which includes Argentina, Australia, Belarus and many countries as given in this article which already have the domestic legislations with respect to the Antarctica. But India did not have any domestic legislation as such with respect to Antarctica and as a result the government now drafts a bill which happens to be the first domestic legislation with respect to Antarctica in India. India because 27 other countries had it and India did not have the domestic law this becomes a very important parameter and why else did the government initiate this particular bill when you look at number of expeditions that happened from India to Antarctica most of these expeditions that happened from India to Antarctica are working in terms of the international law to give further push to this international law so that the domestic laws also match the international law what we required is a domestic law but we did not have a domestic law as a result the government feels that yes our expeditions are in line with the international law but added to it we can also take care of the domestic law as well so that the domestic law meets the parameters of the international law since we do not have the domestic law let's initiate one that's the first objective the second objective is in reference to in the past number of years India has been able
able to increase number of activities in Antarctica. And over a period of time, because of the climate change, we also have to understand what could be the implications to other parts of the country and also to India as well. So what are we doing? We are going to expedite the number of operations, experiments will be more in the near future with respect to Antarctica. So what we also required was a domestic legislation, which we did not have. As of now, we are conducting experiments, but in the near future, the number of experiments will be comparatively more. So to keep up to this particular pace of experiments, we require a domestic legislation because apart from the international laws, these people who go up to Antarctica will also have to stick on to the domestic rules and regulations. And third is that we also have the Antarctica Treaty and further giving push to the Antarctica Treaty. We wanted to have a domestic legislation, which is why we have taken up this initiative. So the Antarctic Treaty was signed in the year 1959 by about 12 countries, which include Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Chile, French Republic, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, Union of South Africa, USSR, UK of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and the US of America and came into force in the year 1961. The treaty covers the area south of the 60 degree latitude. What is the unique feature of this legislation? As of now, we did not have the Indian coach having jurisdiction on the Antarctica. But with this particular bill, what we will also have is the jurisdiction of the Indian coach to Antarctica, which means if there are crimes committed by the Indian citizens in Antarctica or foreign citizens who are part of Indian expeditions. In such a case, if they violate the environmental laws or they conduct some of the criminal offences, in such a case, the jurisdiction of Indian courts can also be taken with reference to Antarctica. Apart from the Antarctica Treaty, which speaks about demilitarization of Antarctica, international cooperation and preventing pollution in Antarctica, we also have the Convention on Preservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, which was set up in 1980 for the protection and preservation of Antarctic environment and in particular for the preservation and conservation of marine living resources in Antarctica. What are important features of this bill? The bill comes up with what is called as the permit system. In case there are individuals who planning to go to Antarctica who wishes to visit the continent in such case permission will have to be issued by a committee. The committee will comprise of Secretary of Earth Sciences. It will also have officials from Defence, Ministry of External Affairs, Finance, Fisheries, Legal Affairs so on and so forth and if they violate any of the conditions imposed by this particular legislation their permission will be immediately cancelled. While India as of now does not carry out commercial fishing in Antarctica since every country is also been allotted a certain quota, India is also allotted a certain quota in the near future, Indian fishermen would also be allowed to have commercial fishing. However, there will be laws and rules these rules will not have to be violated. India further does not carry out any tourism activity in Antarctica. But going forward, because number of countries allow tourists to travel to Antarctica, India will also allow tourist operators to operate in Antarctica, but within the strict rules and regulations. But there are prohibitions that are introduced in this legislation, which includes no person shall carry out any nuclear exploration, no person or vessel shall introduce non-sterile soil into any part of Antarctica. No person, vessel or aircraft shall introduce into Antarctica any substance or product. No person shall damage, destroy or remove any historic site or monument in Antarctica. No person or vessel while in Antarctica shall possess, sell, offer, sale, trade, give, transport to anything obtained in contravention to this act. And at the same time, no vessel shall while in Antarctica discharge into sea any garbage, plastic and other products. Basically, that is done to protect the marine environment and all this means that these are the prohibitions that is present as part of this legislation. In case there are people who are going up and they violate the rules and regulations, then what we will also have is penalty being imposed on these individuals. In order to check this particular activity, what we will have is a separate designated code and these codes will try the crimes committed in Antarctica and the penal provision will vary from 10 to 50 lakh and in case it is a nuclear activity where nuclear waste is dumped or a nuclear explosion happens, in such a case, the imprisonment will be for as much as 20 years and the fine can be as much as 50 crores as well. That is when a radioactive activity 
takes place in this part of the Antarctic region. These are some of the important features with respect to this legislation. It is this that we have to understand in reference to this article. So, this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.